Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've seen various methods of solving first order differential equations, we're going to apply it to some very special cases. In this case, we're going to apply it to some electric circuits and solving electric circuits of a particular kind because in some cases we need second order differential equations to solve electrical circuits. But for the simple circuits like this where we have resistors, inductors, capacitors, single voltage sources, we should be able to solve them by using the first order differential equations, but we need to know a little bit about them. One of the ways in which we solve these types of uh, problems where we try to find the current inside circuits, we need to understand something about the voltage drop across the various devices. We have the resistors, we have inductors, we have capacitors. How do you calculate or how do you represent the voltage drop across these devices? Well, in the case of resistors, it's the current through the circuit times the resistance. So here is R for resistance. So we multiply the current times the resistance, that gives us the voltage drop across the resistor. In the case of inductors, it is equal to the inductance L times the change of the current in the circuit with respect to time. In the case of capacitors, it's equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the size of the capacitor. Now, in the case of capacitors, we want to write it in terms of the current. And since we know that the current is equal to the change in the charge over time, and then we separate the variables, we can then say that the charge Q is equal to the integral of the current times dt. So the longer the current flows, the more charge accumulates on the capacitor. What we're going to do in the future examples is we're going to sum up all the voltages around the circuit. So when we get to the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor, it'll be a voltage drop. The voltage will drop from the positive side to the negative side of the resistor. Notice that in these particular examples, we're going to assume that the current flows through the circuit from the positive to the negative side. In some engineering classes, they like to have the current flow from the negative to the positive. In physics, they like to have it flow from the positive to the negative. It really doesn't make any difference. You get the exact same results as long as you start with one and stick to that one type. So that means that when the current comes around and we go across the resistor, we go from the positive to the negative side. Same for the inductor, same for the capacitor. With the inductor, we have to be a little bit careful. Notice that it will be a voltage drop when the current increases. So with other words, we close the switch, current begins to flow to the circuit, the current increases as it does over time, and therefore if DIDT is positive, we have a voltage drop by multiplying the inductance times the DIDT. Now, if in, in the case that the current is actually decreasing, maybe for whatever other reason we can have, then if this is a negative quantity, then we'll actually we'll have a voltage rise across the inductor. So we have a voltage drop. If the current is increasing, we have a voltage rise when the current is decreasing across an inductor. So that's good to know. So now that you understand the voltage drops across these three devices, we're now ready to try to do some examples in these, in some, uh, some examples with circuits, with real circuits, to try and find the current in those circuits using the technique of solving differential equations. So stay tuned if you're interested in this kind of thing.